Hey, you guys want to see something cool? Okay. Uh, yes. The Ark Missile. This is experimental prototype I acquire from the Hellgast. He means he stole it. Yeah, but this is the kind of world where I think you probably could just say stole. You don't need to be clever. Firing arc lightning at all targets in range. A few blasts will drop an enemy, so maybe you interrogate him. So, again, I... I kind of have to question the fact that, like, this is a missile. Like, it doesn't seem very missile-like. Like, yeah, it, really just, it more floats around you like some kind of drone. It, it floats around you like a bird, as if it were some kind of owl. Hmm. Mm, nah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, maybe a few years too early, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's basically like your own personal Emperor Palpatine floating around zapping the shit out of people with Force Lightning. Cool. All right, and uh, with that, welcome back to Killzone Mercenary. Uh, I introduced my cohorts last time, but uh, you know what? They didn't like that, so you guys are on your own. And while you're at it, introduce me. Thanks. Um, so today, the part of Blind Sally will be played by world-renowned actor Tom Cruise. Uh, in true C. Jacobs LP fashion, as I've taken over and absorbed this one into my being, uh, Tom Cruise is now a unitologist instead of what he actually is, an alien. And hello there, I'm... Uh, screw you, Benoit. <laughs> yeah, and, and hello there, I'm Jeffrey of Yospos, current owner of Something Awful Incorporated, LLC. I don't... I don't think that's who you are. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. I guess I haven't checked recently. It's been a couple of years. Also, we had a, another cameo from Ivanov there. Who? Remember the, the guy who blew himself up in the reactor core? Not ringing a bell. I must have repressed those traumatic memories. Really? Because I quite vividly recall you having an absolute fucking meltdown over it. Hmm... No, you must be thinking of someone else. Someone, uh, someone who has the emotional capacity of larger than a walnut. Right, so this is kind of cool in that Templar's battle group. You can see him in the background over there. Those are Templars somewhere over there. Hey, he's um, still alive in this they're, continuity. They're landing on the beaches and yep. Natco and Garza and whatever the rest of their names are. Yup. Sev Velasquez. They're, they're off on the beaches. Ooh, right here, watch this. Like that guy in the boat, we'll meet him at some point. Spoiler alert. But yeah, I, I love the fact that this game is just basically like the 300 Rise of an Empire to Kill Zone 2. Yeah, so now that basically every other Phantom Talon Corps soldier died in that last mission, it's it feels like it's basically Benoit and Danner and whoever's driving that intruder. There are more of them, but you know, he's going to let me do this on my own, so that's cool. See, that's what I was going to say, is I know none of your companions are going to die in this mission because Benoit is your companion and he's a main character. <laughs> you can't hoodwink me again. It's not happening this time. There's not really, like, an actual other way in. You can either walk straight through the, the courtyard right here or go around the corner up a ladder. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a kill zone game. The the full the full frontal approach is always best in kill zone, even when the enemy has Gatling gun turrets. <laughs> but yeah, like like I was saying, like we're gonna do this one quote unquote alone. But I have a feeling that Benoit is gonna be just in our ear constantly. I kind of wasted that arc missile there. I I should have fired it at that turret, but uh, I think I got distracted. Distracted by what? Being riddled with bullets yeah. until your Swiss cheese. I got a knife. Nice to see that both of us are absolute garbage with all the cool toys that uh, Killzone gives you to play with. I would be better at this game. Fuck you. <laughs> well, we all know that's a lie. I'm saying it in jest because we all know it's true without me having to even confirm it. And yeah, I know in the second video I said I didn't like the grenade launcher and wouldn't use it much. I figured I'd use it a little bit more just to see if maybe I could get uh, some enjoyment out of it. I'm not really enjoying it. I'm, as soon as I find a blackjack box, I'm going to turf this again. Yep. Only you would be able to, like, not wring enjoyment out of just 
lobbing grenades out of people and then just seeing them go flying across the screen in massive explosions. Yeah, they were pretty dug in there. I would say that was a pretty good use of it, actually. Yeah, but Seven Act Jack, it's very convenient that you got these boxes wherever I happen to go. It's really, really convenient. I appreciate it. It's just weird. Is it ever explained how he is able to be so clingy? He's like a he's like a clingy ex. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he he needs that revenue stream Ooh, super hard. Ooh, and check out this sweet yes. Vecton propaganda. Yeah, like that you literally walked away from I, the second I better you saw see it. these guys first. But, well, I'll look at it again in a minute. But it really makes Vecta look so much better than Helgan. Um, I'm surprised this embassy has stood as long as it has. I mean, buildings do seem to just randomly, spontaneously combust due to terrorist attack in the Killzone world. <laughs> oh, those light shafts also, don't see if you look can spot great, the enemy but that smoke looks all right. Shit. We have a serious PS Vita graphics. Yeah, that's pretty good. That, that's a pretty good JPEG of smoke. <laughs> This is what we call being a coward, but being a coward keeps you alive in Killzone, it turns out, so. If you guessed the big flamethrower, dude, you are correct. We got flamethrower Hellgast here. Oh, I wasn't paying any attention to what you were saying there, Blind Sally, I'm sorry. I, I was a thousand miles away talking about smoke JPEGs. <laughs> Yeah, great, because this is exactly what Killzone needed. Hell gas with flamethrowers. Fire exit. Great artwork. It's a shame. The, they were like they were like one room away from safety before they all burnt to death. <laughs> Here's Dior. You can see the Hall of Justice in there. Again, that's kind of their own fault. They were the guys with the fucking flamethrowers. I guess that's true. I guess friendly fire with a flamethrower is pretty... I suppose it's nice that they Common? keep throwing back to our first and second level, although it does make the Killzone universe feel real small, that that's the only city section of Vecta that gets referenced, but wh whatever, it's, it's a video game. I mean, like, it's either There's that or Vecta Company. It's either that or I'm Vecta sure City. I'm sure is well on his way up the beachhead at this point. This is beautiful. I love war. But yeah, like, I, I was going to mention an interesting thing about, like, color theory. Like, this is the only place that you actually see pink so far in the game with the, uh, the they cherry trees. They put the same banner on both sides, so... Yeah, I guess they're cheap, the Vectans. They're just going to do it twice. Yeah, and I, and I love that it's conveniently missing the exact same cutouts as well. Sadly, I can't read the book titles. It's too blurry. But I appreciate that there's been detail nonetheless. I always like that kind of set dressing, too. I've always been a fan of when a video game puts in, like, a museum, and then they actually furnish it with things for the player to look at. Like, shit on Bioshock Infinite for being total garbage all you want, because it is, but <laughs> that game has a good museum it's in it. very clear that the Hellgast were just yeah. waiting for a pretext to come in here and destroy this embassy. This, this level is where the plot really starts to kick up. I, I dig this level. It's a good one. This game's got a plot? Allegedly. But yeah, for, for me, basically, like, the height of uh, video game museums is the one in the Shinra Tower in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Doesn't ring a bell. I must have repressed those traumatic memories. Well, as you know, Benoit, it's thanks to the Ambassador that Admiral Grey was able to be rescued. She got I shot in the sure head! Just, just as we found that out, the hell she survived. found out, now they're, they're off to kill him. What do no. you guys think? I, I think it's ridiculous. A, a bullet entered her face. She got shot in the head, yeah, and then see, you even had... Blackjack is, yeah, yeah. There was nothing you could do. Your Blackjack robot wouldn't savvy. hack fast enough, but then afterwards it hacked really fast. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, also Ben was like, oh, when did the ambassador become public enemy number one on Helgen when right. he is, so he's I literally off the, the only Vectin device last mission. on Helgen? So I think I better show it at this point. He doesn't read the news. This is a good place to show it off, too. We're going to go through the ambassador's library here, and there's a lot of enemies we can just totally dodge. Ooh. 
Oh, this is a nice change of pace. Go on with your bad self, Sam Fisher. <laughs> oh. So in case you didn't catch that bit of audio dialogue, uh, the commander of these forces right here said, Take anything marked secret and destroy the rest. I love that he assumes the ambassador will keep his secret files in a folder marked secret. But I guess this is the kill zone universe and people are that stupid, so. It's kill zone. <laughs> I oh, feel like right there, because we stealthed through that whole section, we got a stealth bonus. Another 500 bucks just for not killing anyone. Loudly. Speaking Again. of which. Thank goodness you killed someone. It's been about 30 seconds since you've killed someone in this zone. And if you go more than one minute or go under 55 miles an hour, I mean, the video is just going to explode, and that'll make the viewers really unhappy. Oh, I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have been talking over that. That was tragic. Mm. But again, I love the fact that, like, everything is monetized in this game, like... Kill people, make money. Don't kill people, also make money. This bodyguard right here is the most Warhammer 40k orc Hellgast of all Hellgast. And I'm just going to let him do the talking at this point, because uh, I dig him as a side character. Well, it's funny you say that, because the guy who actually voices this dude does show up in Dawn of War 3 as an orc. I wonder how much money that guy got for killing this kid's parents. Do you think it was worth it that he turned this child into an orphan? Uh, Boris didn't kill him. Like, the, the fucking Hellgast did. Boris was trying to defend them. Oh, no, I didn't mean the big daddy. I meant the... I meant the other guys. Oh. No, the Hellgast are all space commie Nazis, so they don't believe in money. Oh. Oh. Also, I, I love the fact, Sally, that you still have the grenade launcher, even though you've said repeatedly that you're going to ditch it. Oh, he's a man after my own heart. <laughs> well. So, yeah, his his name is spelt Justus, but they pronounce it Justice. I was about so to ask the thing. Why but, they. Yeah, this will be a, a fun part right here. And see, Jacobs? Yes. This. I, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, a little spoiler alert. The bodyguard is not gonna make it, and I'm just gonna tell you ahead of time. We're gonna we're gonna break the cycle of surprising you with a tragic death. The bodyguard is gonna die an honorable one. He's gonna sacrifice himself so that we get away. Just just so you know. No surprises. Cards are on the table. That's that's what's gonna happen. I feel like that's not true. But given given this guy's Rico like shape, I feel like I'm going to enjoy his presence a lot more than Rico either way. I'm happy he's here permanently or no. I have accepted the fragility so yeah, of life. Boris here I isn't think. kidding. As long as you take out the rocket launcher Hellgast, he is supremely good at mowing down every single one of these SMG soldiers. He can tank their bullets and will just drain them. But he's slow. So it takes him a while to come around bear to hit those rocket launcher soldiers. And if they hit him, he will fall down. He'll get knocked off balance, and that'll give him a chance to just pummel him with rockets. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Big Daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Boris is fucking uh, great. Yeah. yeah I, I do like this side character. He's funny. It's almost worth Ivanov's extremely preventable but still very tragic demise. And that other guy, Steve Carell or whatever, his, his, uh, after the office, his career just kind of took a nosedive. <laughs> Straight into a missile. Yeah, I, you, I was going to say that if you didn't say that, so thank you for saying it. You're welcome. I got you covered, buddy. Hell yeah. You, you and I, I we're like, we're like Garza and... What also, was the other guy's name? Natco. Yeah, so there you go. Um, if we are not paying attention, the rocket launcher guys in this section are very trigger happy. They will kill Boris fast if we don't watch his back. But fortunately, Justice, who is actually a pretty good NPC escort character, um, he's invincible, can't be hurt, will stay out of the way, and will call out rocket launcher Hellgast when they come. So this mission... This escort mission is pretty solid as far as escort missions go. It avoids a lot of the pitfalls that make them, well, suck. 
So what you're saying is, I compared this guy to Rico, but actually, we're Rico. Basically, yeah, th this guy is kind of the anti-Rico. Oh my god. Like, he's- we have met the- the ultimate Killzone character. He's the bizarro Rico. He's- he's- he's loyal, he's effective in combat, he can- he's willing to take a bullet for his friends instead of making his friends take a bullet for his other friends like a moron. He's not a martyr for an insane cause that doesn't make sense. He doesn't make other people into martyrs for their own insane causes that don't make sense. He doesn't nuke millions of billions of people with radioactive energy. At least I don't think he does that. He hasn't done it yet. Sorry, what was I talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh. But yeah, it's it's also worth pointing out just for the sake of continuity that to. Uh, the gun that Boris is hauling around and basically just mowing down these hell I will with. say, even on a hard mode, uh, Boris can take a lot of rocket launchers to the face. He's pretty tough. He's not invulnerable, but he can face tank rockets. And again, like I was saying, the, a big part of that is the fact that the gun that he's uh, ho uh, hoisting around is uh, the Scylla chain gun from Killzone Liberation, the one that basically you have to, like, buy for like a couple hundred thousand Vecton dollars and like unlock with a cheat menu. Oh, nice. Why are they doing this? So he, he essentially is the ultimate Killzone veteran. Basically. <laughs> he played yeah. through New Game Plus. I was going to say, he he's that guy whose save file that I downloaded that had everything unlocked that like had like a hundred thousand hours put into it or some shit. Yeah, his, his presence is making me feel a whole lot better about the tragedy that's taking place here today. <laughs> you know, I know of another game uh, where the protagonist's parents had been killed by, uh, Vecton soldiers. Can't think of the name of it, though. I don't know, but yeah, I'm getting some very strong flashbacks <laughs> to it with the, the fact that, again, shoving uh, a small child into a good grate. Lad. Good lad. I'm gonna, no, I'm but, gonna say good lad whenever but, Justice does something good. Because he's a good lad. We were the one going through the grate before. And now it's all come around full circle. We have entered Considering the kid zone. you don't care much for mercs and would rather see me dead, well done, Boris, Justice. I appreciate the well-timed intel that I'm sure will have a bearing on the later plot. So this is pretty cool. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. This, I love that. That's a nice little touch that just uh, really in reinforces the idea that the Hellgas drop ships, ships are kind of like flying APC tanks, like... Just boom, crash through the skylight, drop off the soldiers, make a mess. There's your LZ. Kill the mercenary. It's like not going to work. A, a I'm going to wipe them all out. Drone. But you know what? Good effort on the Hellgast's part. Again, yeah, you just ho hover over the LZ, cut the engines for like a second, and then smash. There's your point of ingress. Yeah, it's a literal dropship. Also, this... This reminds me of the big bank heist in Payday 2, where instead of crashing through the ceiling with a gigantic military APC from a hostile, uh, a, a hostile military force, uh, it's a giant pink pig. <laughs> All right, it's so funny though, this is I can't really tell the difference between the, the pig and the Vectans. They're not even going to have a chance. This will be great. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that with Juice Deuce present. I feel like Juice Deuce is going to be offended. I mean, he, he's, he's half Vecton, half Hellgas, so yeah, he'd be offended either way. Yeah, I feel the like guy. he... I feel like we're traumatizing him every time we essentially take a cattle prod to his people, hostile or not. <laughs> In case you didn't catch that, uh, Boris's insult there was, you fight worse than Vectans. So, uh... <laughs> what? Uh, wait. He and Rico would get along, I'm sure. No. Wait, no. It's fine. In the heat of battle, Boris... He's not... 
He's not the quickest on his feet, and it's not just the armor, let's say. <clears throat> Doesn't quite have the silver tongue that you'd expect, I guess. It's okay, neither do I. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out, uh, now that we're not seeing it anymore, but to... I love the cherry trees in the atrium here, basically as a callback to, like, all the way to the Great. start of so everyone one. say your goodbyes to oh. Boris now. This is the moment. Oh. Oh, he can't come with us. He's too chuffy. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh-oh. Also, I, I love the fountain there. If you uh, pay attention to it, it looks like a strand of DNA. Very, very subtle foreshadowing of the shit that's going to be right, coming okay, up. Right, okay, so it's not this exact uh -huh. moment. You, you've got me there, but it's it's coming. Be ready for it. It's going to be a sad moment. A sad day here in the kill zone. But at least we have each other. I feel like it's reverse psychology at this point. Like, the, <laughs> I'm just inclined to not believe the things that you say, whether positive or negative. This LP has turned into some kind of, like, mean psychological experiment. Like a Skinner box, and you're using it on me. I'm the one being electrocuted here. I mean, I do have a clipboard and notepad here that I've been writing stuff down every time you say things, so... Are you a licensed therapist? I didn't know birds were allowed. A, uh, I'll leave a proximity mine there for you, uh, Boris. Flip, flip a coin and find a out. Goodbye, Owl. See you in Shadowfall someday. And good goodbye, Boris. See you later, Boris. Now, uh, hold, hold, hold on. Listen for it. Yeah, there you go. Press F to pay respects. What? No, oh, that was at the very beginning of the mission. We we saw him escape with the boat. Benoit and I. Yeah. We can use this one. Wait, w wait. Did, was that implying that Boris died? Mr. Well, Bubbles. Well, gentlemen, that's been fun. I hope you guys are ready for a whole whack of escort missions with a small child. I'm, but just as he's, he's all right. He's all I'm, right. I'm not. We haven't done the LP of it. Shadowfall yet. We did it. We, we finally made it. We have entered the kid zone. Diplomatic Incident? That's the name of this mission? It's a, it's a good mission. You know, I really enjoy this one. It's a fun one. I played it a lot, I, not just because it's a blast to go into the shooting gallery with Boris, but because it's just well-paced overall. This is a really, really tight mission. Um, here, I'll show you guys the alternate route that Benoit mentioned. So you can see just how absurd his idea is, but yeah. I say again. I feel like the straightforward approach was the better one. You get to hang out with the big daddy. Oh yeah, see Jacobs. Um, I know you. You what was that that documentary you were talking to me about? The one that you said changed your life. Um, yes. What was it? My octopus teacher. That that one that was on Netflix. Um, yeah, I like. D this might be a good place for you to really talk up that documentary and just how it changed your perception of the kill zone. Well, so... Crow, feel free to chime in as well. I know you guys uh, are both big fans of My Octopus Teacher. Oh. And... I'll, I'll let C. Well, Jacobs go first on this one. Considering how it's so. colored your perception of the kill zone, I, th I think it's a relevant discussion we should have here. Well, so... The thing about being uh -huh. an octopus is that you have more arms right. with which to hold a controller. And I have gained a new perspective here because... I only have two hands, and we've discussed yeah, just, historically in the Kill Zone videos how I suck yeah, yeah. at yeah, playing. The guy, the, the guy did the big uh, muscle flex. It's good. I noticed um, it was cool. We talked about I'll how skip I ahead suck here. at, uh, and, at and this uh, time, controllers uh, like, shooting. Sorry to interrupt our chat about my octopus teacher, yes. uh, but just to explain this for our viewers, uh, this part right here, I'm going to let Boris be killed as soon as possible. I might have to stop watching the video when that happens, it is hard but that's to watch. okay. So maybe you can help cheer us with chat about your favorite Netflix documentary, My Octopus Teacher. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? Right! 
more arms to hold controllers with. And so an octopus has an advantage because they can, they, they can like, they have more fine motor control having more arms to hold the controller with. I learned that the reason that I suck at console shooting is not because controllers are a terrible, terrible, inaccurate medium for controlling a shooting video game. That's not the case. I'm just not dexterous enough as a human being. That's all I'm saying. Crow, C. Jacobs, let's let's get back to the kill zone, okay? Um, as you can see, this is uh, we haven't made it very far. There are blood stains everywhere, and Boris is still going. The, the man has lost like five people's worth of blood at this point. I think. I failed to see the problem with this. This is his low health warning. Is this actually a reference to the Big Daddy? Do you think? Could be. I mean, think I mean, about it. Big dude yeah, with a bunch goes. of lights yeah. on his helmet, is, ugh, guarding a kid a with heavy weaponry. Just to let Boris go down like that. I did, it, Boris. It he's, would, he's all right. Yeah, it, he's it, a good lad. It would not surprise just, me uh, if it was. You know, well, for the sake of thoroughness, I thought I'd show off what happens when he goes down, and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good, In part it, because now I have to do this entire section on my own. Oh, yeah, what actually, I hadn't thought about so. that. That seems like that would suck, because he was really chewing through those guys. Like, they, you kill, like, 50 people in this checkpoint. Like, also, I, I love, yeah, just, like, the general stun field of what it does to these fucking hell gas, how it makes them start just, like, swaying around like white people listening to, like, fucking how to dismantle an atomic bomb by Thankfully, YouTube. with some good <laughs> tech, like the arc missile... Uh, getting through these hordes of enemies without Boris is not impossible. Yeah, I I do appreciate that losing Boris is not a failure state for the mission. Yeah, that's kind of neat, actually. I like that they reward you for protecting him and actually thinking about, like, hey, rockets will hurt him and they're targeting him, so maybe I should shoot them first so he can keep helping me. Thanks, Mr. Bubbles. <laughs> But really, though, think about it. Like, big dude in armor protecting a, a pale, thin, <laughs> mealy-faced kid 